I'm here today with Winton Baines. He's the founding director of Dilf Energy Solutions. Their attempt is to empower the nation. We we're just talking about a pretty interesting story of your life where you had to switch from pursuing being a pro athlete to now being an energy. Yeah. So can you share that well, with us? Yeah. So my, my profession, well, my dream was to be a professional footballer. As you guys would know, probably soccer. Start off that being my, my main drive. I, I done quite well to get myself to a certain level. I then moved from South Africa all over way to England. Had had a fair share of success. And then life just kind of hit at me. I became a father really, really young. I think I, I lacked a bit of experience and maturity. So I made a lot of mistakes, which ended up be having to go through a lot of personal endeavors. I suppose that's the word. I ended up being homeless at one point, which my family don't like say, but it's, it's my journey. It's my truth. Worked my way to, I think God's grace kind of just guided me to, to do what's right. Got myself into a position where I went to engineering, which is my current field right now. I worked my way from an apprentice all the way up into being the area, senior area engineer. So I look after a bunch of engineers. So just under management and then. In this whole process, I aspired to, to do something for my country, where I come from. And one of the biggest challenges they face till this day is called load shedding. And the reason why I, I decided to open this company, or I, I got a bunch of guys who I can say I trust my life with. I volunteered, I asked people who want to join this idea that I've had. I've asked over 50 people and only about five agreed. I gave them this idea, this proposal, and I told them, look, we're going to ride this. It's a far shot, but I've got faith and we want to get this company up and running. We now registered it as a company. We have some verbal agreements going forward and we have some challenges ahead of us because the energy sector is, is not easy. There's also some politics involved that that's taken place and we can, we've put some steps in, in, in place. But I'm, 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 I'm the founding director of Delph Energy Solutions. And my whole, our whole goal, excuse me, is to empower the nation. That being in the physical stance, as well as financially, environmental impact we have. Because what we do is create energy using biomass products. And there's, there's a whole breakdown where we can get into it and, and why we think it's been efficient uh, for the environment and and what things we offer. And I think we probably try and discuss this later on, but our journey right now, we in a position where we are looking, well, we, we aid the investors to join us because we on the brink of finally addressing load shedding and putting an end to it for good. So how would you put an end to so it? So what we would do is we would create energy using our biomass plants. And what we, so biomass energy is actually old technology sounds crazy how, how this came about, but I couldn't sleep one night and I was dwindling and thinking about some stuff and I'm a man of faith. I don't go to church as much, but I, I believe in God. And to me, I was, my mind was racing and I kept thinking of my, cause my parents still live in South Africa. My family still in South Africa. We couldn't have like a normal phone conversation or anything like that because load shedding is ultimately they switch off electricity at certain points or stages in the country. And every part of that, that specific block or neighborhood would get shut down. There'd be no electricity. Now that brings a lot of things that brings up late to they taking crime. That means job loss, businesses don't want to invest or think they could stay there because if they can't keep the lights on, why would we keep the businesses running? So there's been a lot of loss of business. There's been employment is high, unemployment is high, excuse me, crime rate is high. And this has been ongoing since 2007. That came from me looking at steam engines, funny enough, because steam engines has been old technology. And when I, there's someone I spoke to in America, in Michigan, who was a professor and they, they work within a biomass industry. And there's a couple of power stations that run using biomass technology. I want it slightly different in the, in the design because 
are designed in a way if you were to think about a grater. When you grate cheese, the refined stuff falls at the bottom and you've got the thick bits at the top. What we do with those fine stuff, we use that to burn and use fuel. That will go into a steam turbine that produces steam that gets pushed to a generator and that's how we produce electricity. The waste we use or collect gets filtered into another compartment and we, and we convert that into biofuel. So our, our, our power plant not only produces electricity, but also produces biofuel. Now, where we make this about in Prague Nation is we, our aim is to employ the community. So where we build, we employ them in, in skills that we need for storage. We need collection. We need people that, that make food. Our, our staff are not going to come to work and be hungry because the areas where we're trying to reach, obviously deprived areas, we're, we're looking to, to make sure that the people that work for us want to work for us, but also are taken care of and looked after. And the, the community aspect, they'll feel involved. We also have a regeneration a program where for every place we, we, we find our crop or material, we replant a certain amount of, of trees and miscanthus grass so that we, we constantly have the flow of agriculture going. We also have programs that we are looking to bring on apprentices and make people study, understand the biomass sector. This brings a lot of jobs. This brings a lot of interest from foreign investment because it's one of its kind. In Africa, there's not any biomass product. There's biomass trade happening where people sell biofuels, they sell bio pellets, but there's no source to produce power. And one of our goals is to start in South Africa, because that's where we, we see the problem first, because that's where we're from and what we understand. And then we, we're branching out into Africa and to basically make one of the biggest companies going forward. Now we've had agreements with municipalities, what's the, 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 the equivalent to what you call in America, boroughs, states, I suppose, that have that one individualistic power stations built because everyone currently right now wants to get off the main energy provider. There's only one energy provider in South Africa and most people want to come off their grid. Now we've had this where the politics comes in. We've had discussions with the IPCC and NASA who have alluded to us that we cannot build or produce electricity for one municipality or borough with for longer than a year. If we were to do so, ESCOM being the main provider would need to be involved. There would need to be a tender and there would need to be some sort of brokerage between the two because we need, we need to use their energy grid to build, to plug in because, excuse me, two ways we can do this. There's an all the expensive way is rebuilding the entire network because another for, problem that this brings with load shedding is you get cable thefts. So the, so the energy company, when they turn off the electricity, people still steal the cables, copper, electricity cables, whatever you name it, because there's ways obviously to make money in, in poverty stricken places. So we have chambers in which we would, would feed our, ca our cables through. It'd be security protected. So even if there was an outage, you, you can't access those, those chambers. But if one of us would do this, we need permission from NELSA and IPCC, which we are working towards getting so that we can bring people off the ESCOM grid. The problems we face in municipalities are in debt to the energy supplier. So the only way we can go around that is by buying their debt, paying them out their, their debt, and then we take over the supply. Our main goal was never to be about financial gain, our, our main aim is to, to see the nation improve. We believe South Africa has so much natural resources, so much opportunity that we can only see the goodness of it. Now, every place has its, its negatives and whatnot, but we see that there's so much that South Africa has in general and Africa as a whole continent. I mean, our exports are, the, the, the number of, between Europe and that is huge. 
we export our, our spices, our fruit, our veg, whatever the case may be. But we never tend to, to do that inwards and work as a collective unit. And I think there's a deeper discussion there that goes down to, I think, history as to why we, we don't work well with one another. But that's something that, that, that probably for another time where we can discuss the flaws of why that is. But our main aim right now is to get over this hurdle. Well, now we have investment who will peak interest and we're trying to secure these deals to move forward. And opportunities like this for us to speak and hear our story is what kind of helps us and elevates us. Now, the difference between most companies is that all of us have experience. Well, I have engineering background. My partners have trade backgrounds. They have logistic backgrounds, financial backgrounds. So all of us has put our heads together to make one big dragon. And this is where we are right now. I mean, we've got a feasibility study that is bulletproof. We have a, a thesis that's been done by, by someone, with a, a doctor in biomass and understands how our plant works compared to others. That's a bulletproof document. And all we are at, at the mercy right now is of investment and politicians. But as I said to be before, I believe anything you, you put your mind to, you will achieve. One of my favorite mentors I listen to is Eric Thomas. And every day I wake up with my why is I've, I have my reason why I live, why I need to, and why we keep fighting. And I think we all in the same mindset to change our nation. None of us are looking at a money grab because I'll, I'll share a story here and I won't mention a name, but we were offered an extraordinary amount of money to take our idea and for someone else to, to use it. And when they offered us this money, I mean, it was life changing. I could never work a day in my life type of money. And that, that was retrospective checking in ourselves and thinking, are they going to use this, this plan for the better of the community or is this for them to make money? And we all in agreement said, we ain't going to sell this because we want to make sure that we get our, our, our project with the right mentality, the right people come in so that we can change the nation and change the way things are going right now. Do you have a, a prototype power plant? We, we have a, like a, an operation. We, we don't have one in operation, but we have one to scale on a, on a design as well as an animation that we, when we present our, our data, we correlate the, the data with the thesis and the feasibility to our potential investors. So Winton, if some potential investors mm -hmm. wanted to learn more or get in touch with you, how could they do so? So they, they, they can get in touch with us via LinkedIn. If we have a LinkedIn page, we have a Twitter page. And we have an email address. I could drop that for you and you can put it in because it's, it's quite long to explain. <laughs> I can, I can put it all down there for you. That's where they can get a hold of us. We're very flexible. I mean, last, last week I had a meeting with someone in Singapore in their time zone, which is early hours over here. But I mean, again, to try to achieve things, you have to sacrifice. I mean, I'm a parent first and I'm very proud of being a father regardless of my mistakes and my children all live with me and even my kids support my ideas and, and, and our vision because I shared this with them. I said to them, this is what's going to happen, how we need to achieve because I want, I want to teach my kids as well that no matter what life throws at you, you have the ability to change things every single day. You wake up, it's a blessing because that can be taken away. And I, I have, they know my personal experience of loss. Because I, I used to say to them that me and Def are like, are like cousins, but I feel like they know what hard work looks like because they've seen me do in my, in my own field, the overtime and all of that. And they've also seen the other side to it. So one thing I want to teach, want to teach or encourage is that don't let anything dictate who you are apart from you and God. So yeah. Go from there. I want to well, thank you, Winton, for coming on the show. And I want to thank everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. Make sure to subscribe. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.